Thank you, Uncube, for sponsoring today's video. School was always hard for me. I would go to class, sit down, take out all of my things, and then I would try very hard to focus. But, whoa, there's a bird. What are those people talking about? What movie is that guy watching in class? And by the time that I refocus my attention, we are five slides in and I have no idea what's happening for the rest of the class. So you see, in order to not fail all of my classes and disappoint my Asian parents, I learned how to self-study. This is a skill that saved my ass when I had to go in for a data science interview in Meta, in which five of the seven interview rounds was in SQL. I didn't know any SQL, but I was able to teach myself in 11 days and pass the interview and get a job. I would not recommend it though. That was not a fun time, but I did it. These days it's become more of a habit and a hobby for me. I really love learning new things. I've learned how to swing trade, even made a coding bot. I've learned how to make YouTube videos, edit YouTube videos, start a business, personal finance, marketing, AI, a lot of different skills. And you know what's the interesting thing? These may seem like really different things to learn, but they actually follow the same guiding principles. So in this video, I'm gonna cover a step-by-step -step framework on how to learn anything quickly and effectively. My tool of choice here is gonna be ChatGPT because ChatGPT has really revolutionized this process. There's two big things that it brings to the table. The first one is that it's a comprehensive tool that's able to aggregate together all of the different resources and tools that are out there on the internet and become something much more powerful. It then is able to take that information and present it to you and teach it to you in an individualized way that is perfect for your goals, your skill set, and your learning style. Before we get started, I just want to make a plug for my newsletter called Boops Keyboard. It's about learning, it's about coding, it's about books. It's also where I first drop any news and give people first dibs and discounts of things that I make. Like Lonely Octopus, for example, where you can learn AI skills, data skills, and work on real freelance projects from companies. All right, let's get started. So the first step that lays the foundation to your learning journey is called meta learning. And it's about figuring out what it is that you're going to learn and how it is that you're going to learn it. And it includes coming up with a study plan that details all of the resources and how you're going to be using these resources. It is a crucial step that so many people skip, which ends up making them give up or just being really ineffective. Let me illustrate this process with an example. If you didn't know, I am a weep. I admit it. I really like anime and I really like manga in case you couldn't tell. In fact, one of my top goals in life is to be able to read manga and to understand anime, watch anime without any subtitles. Recently, I've decided that I'm going to actually start working towards this goal. And this is how I approached it. Let's jump on over to ChatGPT. Act as an expert language tutor and tell me what is the best way to learn a language quickly while it's doing its thing. By doing this, I am able to understand what is the best way of doing something. I am not the first person to want to learn Japanese or any other language. There's many people that have done that in the past. And from them, I can gain their experience, the things that they've done right, the things that I've done wrong, their resources. And instead of reinventing the wheel, use that so that I'm more effectively able to do this and speed up the process. So immersion, surrounding yourself with the language you want to learn as much as possible. Practice, interacting with native speakers. Structured learning, personalized vocabulary, and think in the target language. So these are really, really helpful for me to keep in mind to optimize my language learning acquisition process. Now comes the really cool part. AI is able to provide a dynamic learning experience that's able to combine all of these best principles, best guidelines in order to optimize my learning acquisition and customize it towards my specific goal. My goal is to be able to read manga and to watch anime without subtitles. This means the course curriculum should include more conversational Japanese and to make it more interesting to me, have more of the resource material, the learning material come from my favorite animes like Naruto. So now let's actually get that detailed study plan. Act as an expert Japanese tutor that creates study plans to help people learn Japanese. You will be provided with the goal of the student, their time commitment and resource preferences. You will create a study plan with timelines. My first request, I want to learn Japanese with a focus on being able to read a manga and watch anime without subtitles, specifically shows like Naruto. Please include best practices and principles of language learning you outlined above. I can study eight hours per week over a period of 12 weeks. Create a study plan for me. And we wait. 
So weeks one to four, introduction to Japanese and hiragana. That is basic phrases, greetings, and learn about the structure of the language. Uh, you can use different apps. Practice listening and pronunciation. Watch episodes of Naruto, any other anime. Try to pick up words, listen to the rhythms of the language, and try to mimic it. And then weeks five to eight is katakana and basic grammar. Weeks nine to 12, and it goes on. In the book, Ultra Learning, which is one of my favorite books and the book that I attribute to me landing my data science job. It talks about this principle of meta learning, and it says that you should be spending around 10% of your entire learning journey just dedicated to this process. Process. ChatGPT has made it such that I am able to do this process within seconds. And I just want to make you know, this is not just for language learning. It is for anything that you want to learn. It can be STEM subjects like coding, like math. It could be budgeting, it could be business, anything. Okay, after getting a study plan, we're going to move on to the next part of the framework for learning anything quickly and effectively, which I call the zoom in and zoom out framework. There's a saying that the chain is as strong as its weakest link. And that is the premise of the zoom in, zoom out framework. Okay, now a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by IonQ. IonQ is a leader in the quantum computing industry. Industry. Quantum computing is a fundamentally different type of computation than the classical computers we use today. At scale, quantum computers will allow us to solve challenging problems currently too big to find a solution for across a wide range of commercial use cases in finance, logistics, chemistry, and more. IonQ is the first pure play quantum computing company to go public, and its trapped ion technology is unique in its space. The recently released IonQ Forte quantum computer is now available commercially worldwide. Forte's performance is enabling IonQ's enterprise partners to achieve a number of first, including improving car battery technology and reducing CO2 emissions via increased operational efficiency that would not have been possible on previously commercially available quantum computing systems. Early adopters are developing proof of concepts, discovering new high value computing opportunities, and getting their organizations ready to capture the most value once quantum advantage, the point at which quantum computers will exceed the capabilities of their classical computing counterparts and are likely to propagate broader commercial use cases is achieved. To access the IonQ Forte for your company and work directly with IonQ's application team to prepare your business for quantum computing, head to ionq.com slash get access, also linked in description. Thank you so much again, IonQ, for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to the video. When I was studying for that meta data science interview, I had 11 days to prepare. SQL is featured in five of the seven interview rounds and I didn't know any SQL. By the way, I was also a full-time student at that time, so I still had to do my class assignments. I still had to go to class and do these things too. So realistically, I had around two to four, four hours max each day to study. So you see, I really didn't have any time to learn anything that wasn't absolutely crucial. I had one goal and one goal only. I wanted to pass the interviews. So how did I do this? First, I zoomed out into the context of my overarching goal, which is passing the interview. I did my research about how interviews work, and I also found a mock interview, which I did. I did this in the complete interview style, starting off with small talk and then going through how I would answer the questions. And then finally, any like potential additional questions the interviewer may have. And I absolutely bombed it. But I was able to gain insight into what that zoomed out chain, what that like interview, that goal is supposed to look like. So then I was able to break it up into all the different links, all the little components that make up that entire interview process. I would zoom in on specific links and then I would zoom out again and do another mock interview and see, okay, like, did I make improvements? What are my weakest links now? And I kept repeating this process until I felt like I had a strong grasp of how to do these interviews. When I walked into that interview room, I did feel scared, but I was prepared. It just felt like another one of the mock interviews that I did. Obviously at that time, there was no chat GPT. So I spent a lot of time on Glassdoor trying to figure out what the questions are, finding what the resources are, what makes up an interview. Nowadays, I would just use chat GPT for all of this. For example, instead of having to go through Glassdoors and then try to compile all the different questions together to figure out what the topics are, I would have asked um, chat GPT something like, I have an entry-level data science interview for Meta, act as an interview coach, and give me a list of the topics to learn for an entry-level SQL data science interview for Meta. Please base this off real interviews and organize a list by the Pareto principle with the most common topics first. And then I would list out some of the cost common questions I would have found on resources like Glassdoor or resources like Stratascratch that has real interview questions. So the reason I just want to say, like I mentioned the Pareto principle is I didn't have any time, right? I had 11 days to prepare for this. So I wanted to make sure that list of topics that I'm going to be studying, I want to start with the most common topics first, like the things that I absolutely have to know and is most likely to show up on the interviews and then go down that list. So that's why I wrote the Pareto principle with the most common topics first. Um, and then these are some of the questions I would give it examples for. And then it would then give me, based on the nature of your questions, I'll recommend you prepare on the following SQL topics for the entry level data science interview at Meta. These topics are sorted according to the frequency of use and importance based on the Pareto principle. And then I would have been like, okay, great. Now I'm going to learn all these 
these basic SQL functions. I need to learn subqueries and derived tables, window functions, uh, date and time functions, conditional logic, data types, and all these things. As I'm working through this, I would also be asking ChatGPT to give me questions that specifically test my knowledge um, on these different operations and on these topics. Instead of me interviewing myself and talking to myself, I would also ask ChatGPT to be that interviewer to make it a realistic mock interview. So I would write, let's do a role play exercise. You're a senior data scientist at a big tech company like Meta conducting the SQL portion of a data science interview. Let's make this an interactive full mock interview and you say things including greet me, introduce the question and the table sets with their schemas and then prompt me to write the answer and ask follow-up questions. So I want it to be the interviewer in this case. And then I would give it a question that I would have found that I know is a question that is commonly gonna show up for um, Meta or Facebook employees. All right, so you can learn all of these things, right? Especially for skills like languages, you can like study that. But what point is there if you then just forget everything you learn? And that is the topic of the next part of this framework to learn anything quickly and effectively, which is retrieval and retention. In my past life, in my undergraduate, I was a pharmacology major, which is the study of drugs. During school, I have memorized hundreds of different drugs and different drug pathways. And drugs, my friends, are hard to memorize because they have really weird names like metoprolol and lisinopril. Lysin lysinopril. Who like who comes up with these drug names? Like, <laughs> but yes, hundreds of these stupid drug names. And there's also these scientific names as well as the brand names. Like, oh god, there's just there's just a lot of names and a lot of different pathways. I want to show you guys three different strategies in order to help you more deeply understand the material and to make sure you don't just learn and forget things. So the first one is self-testing using flashcards. Some of you may have heard about the flashcard app called Anki. It is wonderful. It is free, and you're able to input your uh, in this case would be the drug name and all the whatever things that I have to remember about the drug. You can input this into Enki, but I generally, what I prefer doing these days is that I would just use ChatGPT and then actually instead of writing the cards myself even, what I would do, I would just tell ChatGPT, you're the flashcard app Enki, generate flashcards for these pharmaceutical drugs. And then I would list out all of the drugs and then I also know what it is that I have to remember about them. And instead of having to write it myself, I write a template, which is the front of the flashcard, I would write the drug name and the back would include usage, class, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, description guidelines and side effects. And then I asked it, test me the way that Enki does, including techniques like space repetition. Make sure to keep track of my score and the number of questions I get right or wrong. Allow me to indicate whether I got a question right or wrong. Also indicate how many flashcards I have left. Keep testing me until I get all the questions right. Start testing me with the first card. Here I would go, sure, I have generated the flashcard for you. Let's start testing. And then it would tell me this, This what is this supposed to be? Envelope and... <laughs> amlodipine. To answer your question, you need to provide information. And then I would be like, ah, it's this. And then it would be like, yay, correct. Good job. And then for this one, I can be like, lisinopril. And I'll be like, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. No problem. Let's review this together. Oh, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. So yes, I would keep on doing this until I eventually memorize all these drugs. I have like a few other examples here. So I'm actually going to link these prompts um, in the description box if you want to check that out. So the other technique that I like to use is called the Feynman technique, which is basically explaining things in the most simplest way possible as if you're teaching someone else. So I can say something like, ask me to explain drug pathways using the Feynman technique. And then it tells me, certainly the Feynman technique explains to me is a method of understanding and remembering concepts by explaining them in your own words, as if you were teaching a concept to someone else. Like as an example, step one, choose a concept. Step two, teach it to a toddler. Step three, identify gaps and go back to the source material. Step four is to simplify further. So I would do this for all the drug pathways as well. And this has been shown as a proven technique that's shown to more allow you to more deeply understand the concept and to retain that information better. Final technique is called the Socratic method. Back in the ancient Grecian days of Socrates, this is a method that he would use and it would be used in order to question the premises and the values and the systems of a certain assumption. And by doing this, you're able to get that person to more deeply understand the subject matter. Now ask me to explain in the Socratic method why I would choose to treat a person with a specific drug. So it would tell me using the Socratic method, you're considering a drug for a 50 year old man who presents to your clinic with complaints about palpitations. And they would ask me these questions. What is metoprolol? What class is it? What's the mechanism of action? So by presenting the information in this way, it's also helping me to learn. Um, and it questions why it is that I'm gonna be treating a patient 
in a certain way that I've decided to treat them as. So there's actually a lot of other techniques that I could cover here and this video could go on and on and on. But the general rule of thumb in terms of being able to understand information and to retain that information for a longer period of time is that the more ways that you can encode this information and test yourself and to understand these concepts in different ways, the deeper it is that you're going to understand what's happening. And the deeper it is that you understand something, the more neural pathways are going to be developed surrounding that concept. So you're able to retain that information for longer periods of time. All right, so the final step of this framework is called the experimentation step. So what do I mean by experimentation? I'm getting to the middle end part of my study plan to learn Japanese in order to watch Naruto um, and in order to read manga. So I can like look at the videos and I kind of get it at this point. Obviously, it's like not as native as my English would be, clearly, or my Chinese. I'm just slightly too slow and just watching more of it is just not enough. I can't really get to the next level. But when you reach like a certain point when you feel like you're stuck, that's when you need to start experimenting the way in which you're learning, providing new methods and new methodologies and new resources as well. For example, I can ask ChatGPT, act as Naruto and have a conversation with me in Japanese about your favorite ramen. Wait for me to reply before continuing the conversation. It's more of an active form of practicing uh, that would really elevate me from just passively consuming information. And I think it would improve my Japanese significantly. And another great thing about ChatGPT is really good at suggesting you alternatives for things. Like you don't know what you don't know, right? So something else that you can easily ask ChatGPT is, can you give me alternative ways of learning Japanese in addition to watching anime, practicing on Duolingo, and memorizing Japanese words? with flashcards. And then it can tell you like different other ways that you can be learning. Okay, higher tutor or language exchange, like maybe this is something that you can consider looking at. Like besides anime, looking at different types of media, reading different things in Japanese as well, actually start practicing writing as well. So it's able to suggest me a bunch of alternative methods in order to continue my learning process. Final point I wanna make before ending this video is the importance of other people. So I know that we're essentially saying ChatGPT can do so much in terms of your self-learning journey it can pretty much be your friend, it can be your buddy in learning, but it really can't replace the actual humans, actual humans. At some point, you will hit a wall and also you'll probably get really lonely or bored uh, while you're doing your learning journey. So that's why it's really important to incorporate other people into your learning process. That could include talking to native speakers if you're learning a language like Japanese or having alternative clubs, anime appreciation club, things like that, right? Or even traveling to Japan um, and just meeting different people. If you're learning technical skills, it could also involve like having coding buddies, like working on projects together, joining different like programs or workshops like Lonely Octopus for example all of these things are are ways for you to interact with other people and it Really, once you start getting other people involved, your ability to learn, your scope, and your motivation just absolutely skyrockets. All right, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments, what are you learning right now? Or what do you want to be learning right now? And I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream. 